I want to just build on that, ask you about uh, education and aspiration, uh, because I think it's systematically been crushed, and sadly it was started by our party with the introduction of st student fees. Um, my dad came to this country when he was about 12. He worked in the steelworks. Uh, I went to a local comprehensive, as did my sisters. Um, we were very lucky to benefit from free education. My sister got a first class honours in chemistry and uh, a PhD. Um, I qualified as a barrister. I still live in the area that I grew up, which is Tinsley, which is a part of the east end of, of Sheffield. And um, we would not be in the positions that we are were it not for the opportunities that were given to us and also the fact that we could dream and those dreams seemed attainable. <coughs> now they are systematically being crushed. What was your debt when you left university? I was very, very lucky because there was times I survived on £10 a week. I, my maintenance grant was just enough to cover my rent. Um, I actually came out of university with no debt, but that was because I had a father who came to this country with virtually nothing, making sure that I, I did things properly. But now, you know, as a, as a professional, uh, I look at my two children, and, and I, d I can't imagine that I can give them the help that my father gave me. They're going to come out with £40,000 if they're lucky of debt, which is enough we used to be enough to buy a house here. If I had not had the benefit of free education, if I would not had the support, if my dreams hadn't been encouraged, I wouldn't be doing the job I do now. And there's so many people I meet in areas like this, areas like Tinsley, and I see so much talent in them. They have so much ability, but they just think, I can't go to university. And what's happening now is that, forget about um, uh, attacks on, on, on students, dreams are being crushed. People say, you're not a leader, you've inspired me. It made me join, made my wife join, my children support you. My daughter thinks you're Obi-Wan Kenobi, by the way. <laughs> uh, although I do joke with her that if you watch any films, you know when it's really bad, you need a mature man with a white beard to come and help you. Um, but, you know, you, you have inspired us, you've moved us, because if people think a leader is something that Blair was or Cameron was, that's synthetic, it's hollow. A leader is somebody that can move people, can motivate people, and that's what you've done. And the, and the thing that I like about you, that, I, that Owen, I don't think, even comes close to bringing to the table, I'm a firm believer, you have your principles, and our job is to convince people to move towards us. Yeah. If they don't... Yeah. If, they, yeah. if they don't... We don't change our principles, we work harder. What we shouldn't become, which is what I think Labour became, was a vet weather vane, yeah. forever spinning, trying to find yeah. the prevailing wind. Yeah to get people to vote for us. No, I think the reason why hundreds of thousands of people have come because in you they see hope, they see what really Labour was, what I grew up seeing what Labour was. Myself, when I was in sixth form, I was so passionate to go to uni. I finished my first year of uni now, and I'm thinking, is there something else that I could do? Because I don't think I could continue with university. Because literally, no, like, when I finish university, I don't think it's so hard for me to, to even think of getting a job because of when I come out of uni, the stuff that I need to pay for, it's just crazy. My, 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 one of my siblings, uh, she got a first class degree, uh, alhamdulillah, she got a first, uh, first class degree, and until now, she still hasn't been able to get a job. Until now, she's been struggling. She works so hard, she, day and night, just so then she can get a job. And she, she studied biomedical science, and there's no opportunity for her. I'm studying engineering, and I don't, think, I don't, I don't even think I have opportunity because of what's going on. My sister, my sister's in, my sister's studying in pharmacy, and she doesn't even think, I was speaking to her yesterday, she doesn't even think she's going to succeed because she's working two part-time jobs so then she can live, so then she can live on her study. We're literally struggling. Everyone I speak to, students, they're literally, they're struggling. No one, no, I, sp I spoke to so many students because I'm part of my students' union and I'm, I speak to so many students that are younger, that are 16, that are, that are 17, that are 18, and literally they have so much talent, but they literally, they can't afford it. Their parents are struggling. And literally, we, we used to get our parents like supporting and saying, go to university so then you can, you can be in a better situation than us. They're struggling so much. And I sat like, a few months ago, uh, in May, I sat down with one of uh, uni lecturers because I was running for a position within the union. 
and I was doing research about the BME attainment gap. So many people are leaving university because they're literally struggling within the first three months. Like the first, literally, I was having depression in my first three months. I was literally struggling so much in university. I didn't know what, what was going on, like if I was gonna continue. So many of my friends, they had so much passion, they were clever, and they dropped out within the, the first three months. If you shatter people's dreams, if you break their backs, uh, before they get a chance to qualify, uh, to achieve things like this a young brother wants to, and then you try to make out it's some kind of meritocracy, it isn't. And also, debt, it, what it does, it makes you risk averse. When all you've got is a tenor, you become risk averse. So when you've got 40 grand's worth of debt, you don't want to take chances. And what you don't have time to do is be, to be a critical thinker, to hold government to account, because all you're doing is running in the wheel, trying to pay off your debts. We need to bring up our children to understand each other, to work with each other, obviously to make the best of their own lives, but also to understand where what we have has come from and how it was achieved. Our kids are not brought up to understand that. They're brought up to believe that somehow or other, one day, Parliament thought it'd be a really good idea to have a National Health Service. Let's do it. They didn't say the struggles that went on for decades for the principle behind it, likewise the principle of comprehensive education as opposed to um, selective and more elitist education. I, I don't require every young person to go to university any more than I require every young person to get a good quality apprenticeship. But I do require a society that gives every young person an opportunity to get an apprenticeship or go to university so that the, the opportunity is there and not be saddled with a debt at the end of it. What we've done is turned education into a commodity for under fives and a commodity for over 18s. We've had 30 years of being told that neoliberal economics has got the only answer to everything. No, it doesn't. It's a question of expanding community involvement, empowering communities. Great people don't go off and achieve things on their own. Ordinary people achieve things because all of us come together to make sure that we all benefit from it. When you bring people together, you achieve things. When you divide people, we all lose. Surely the great strength we've got in the Labour Party is that we have this massive membership now, half a million people. They can be that community campaigning pressure in our community that can be a force for so much good. Uh, I think it'll be a long time before the Daily Mail or the Daily Express or the Evening Standard or the Telegraph or any of those papers even begin to understand what community politics and community force is about. But they'll understand it when we show that strength of unity that can bring about the changes in the mentality and attitudes in our society which can bring about real justice for everybody. Thanks very much.